All right, everybody, welcome back to our sixth week in our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. Tonight, we're going to be looking at this phrase of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. I think that one of the greatest blessings in life is being around children. You know, uh, raising them, being an aunt or an uncle to them or a mentor, walking with them through the church. Uh, children have so much to teach us. My daughter Stella is at a really delightful age. She's five and a half. And I think the world can learn a lot from five and a half year olds. For example, Stella is not worried about tomorrow. You know, go ahead, ask her. She's not. She's not concerned about what she will eat, what she will wear, whether she's going to have enough money, what she's going to do, what could happen or not happen. She's just not worried about the future. And that's how it should be, right? Stella and all her preschool buddies are a living embodiment of give us today our daily bread. We don't ask God to provide today what we need for him tomorrow. When we pray, we ask him for our daily bread. This question that's part of the Lord's Prayer is asking us is, what does it mean to trust God on a daily basis? Because that is all we have. You know, yesterday's gone. Tomorrow is unknown. We are called to follow Jesus today. And a big part of our discipleship is trusting him to provide, to take care of all of our needs, to give us our daily bread. And when we do get worried, when we get scared, to come back to him. It's great for us that God has a long history of taking care of his people. You know, what would have been like to wander around in the desert? You know, you're free from slavery, but now what? We can't even eat. They did complain about that, didn't they? Yeah, we were slaves back in Egypt, but at least we had good food. In Deuteronomy 8, we read, And God humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you known that man does not live by bread alone, but lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell those 40 years. I love the specificity of those verses. You know, that God was always watching over and providing for his people in these very intentional ways. Perhaps especially when they were wandering through the desert, not knowing where they were going. God humbled them. God gave them bread every single morning. But the point was not just to feed their stomachs, but to feed their souls, that they might hear from God and know him intimately and walk with him in newness of life. And these really practical matters, their clothing never wore out. I wish my clothing never wore out and their feet never swelled. They could keep walking because God kept them healthy and able to walk. God always provided daily manna, daily bread for his people. Won't he do it today for us? Another illustration. Right after Jesus teaches them the Lord's Prayer, he expounds on it in chapter 6 of Matthew. He tells his disciples not to worry about what they will eat or drink, that God takes care of the birds and the lilies of the field. Jesus reminds them that God knows that we need food and clothing. And what is our calling in the midst of all that? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I'll say it again. God has a history of taking care of his people. There might be a few of us that are watching this that have daily needs. You know, we know what it's like to, to be hungry or not know how we're going to pay our bills. But I'm guessing that the vast majority of us, we have more than enough. And what do we do with that? How do we live when we're pretty insulated from this problem of daily bread? You know, two ideas that I'd like to close with. First, no matter what our circumstances are, our savings account or our resources, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek it with everything you've got, your time, your talents, your treasure. God has given all of that to you to steward for his kingdom. If you have bread to share, invite a friend over. If you can bless others with, with a meal, do it. Do it with joy. Do it thanking God in the process. Second, it's not what you have or don't have that really matters in the end. It's how you look at them. Are you looking at the fact that you've got enough bread for the rest of your life as a source of pride? Look what I've done. Look what I've achieved. 
That isn't even true wealth. <laughs> Knowing Christ is, is true blessing. Dallas Willard says, What hinders kingdom living is not the having of such provisions, but trusting in them for future security. Trusting in them for future security. It's not a sin to have a lot of bread. It's a sin to look to your resources for your salvation. Don't trust in provisions. Trust in the provider, the one who's given his life for you, the one who left the riches of heaven and became poor so that you could become spiritually rich. Rich in the things of God, the stuff that really matters, the life that's truly life. There's a, a little song, uh, a Mexican table blessing that I learned years ago, and it, uh, it goes like this. O oh Lord, give bread to those who now are hungry. Hunger for you to those who now have bread. I feel like that kind of summarizes it. That those of us that are hungry, that God would feed. Those of us whose bellies are full, who, um, who are trusting in God, that, that we would look to him more and more as our provider. So let me just close in prayer, and then we'll go into discussion tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the ways that you provide for us on a daily basis. Thank you for this part of the prayer that you taught us, that we would truly look to you every day for all that we need. Lord, free us from a life of fear and worry, and transform us into people who trust you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great night.